Hello everyone, welcome back to our videos, this is Alan from Technology Moments and we'll show you today the experience that we had with this, the Recon Wi-Fi 6 adapter supporting Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.1 making this little adapter the way to go if you're looking to improve your laptop's wireless networking capabilities For those of you who are wondering, there are basically two types of internal Wi-Fi cards for your computer NGFF, which uses the technologies and the high-speed advantages of M.2 ports and, with not-so-recent laptops, cards for PCIe slots may be accepted. This means that as we showed you in our recent video about PCIe Mini and its great performance advantages, Wi-Fi 6 cards in older laptops combined with SSDs may very well renew them to work surprisingly well for some more time. Now, is there any risk of buying this card and that it does not work on my computer? The short answer is yes, and we proved it also with a PCIe mini card which did not work in computers released in the year 2012 and let's be real, there are still many of those around. With these NGFF cards, just be careful that ports available for such connection matches the card that you bought and it is keyed correctly. Before we go any further, as an example, this computer initially had a wireless N adapter that I upgraded to this AC card. It is currently giving us this performance. It connects to a Unify AC Pro access point and basically has the same performance when connecting to any other Wi-Fi 5 AP. As you can see, it is already a very decent transfer speed, uh, which we're planning on increasing by using this Wi-Fi 6 internal card. For this purpose, we're gonna switch and connect to a Wi-Fi 6 EAP610 access point from Omata from TP-Link. It does not support 6 GHz as this card does, but we'll see later on why. Packaging of this device is very simple and it just includes a small cover bracket that may be very useful in some computers and this little screw to hold it in place. Opening up and disassembling uh, laptop computers requires some skills, but it's not rocket science. If you're patient, you might want to consider doing this yourself. And for the specific model that you own, there may be many step-by-step -step procedures on the internet. Just take a close look and never rush if it is the first time you venture to do it. So, if it is your main computer, you might want to do this on vacations or when you have enough time to spare so you can do it at your own pace. On screen, I'm showing you the procedure of installing this card on an HP 360 3-in-1 laptop computer, which has been subject of many changes over the years and proven to be worth each upgrade. You just have to be very careful with cables, bands, and basically any internal connector as for example, in this computer, you have to completely reach to the deepest components by turning over the motherboard. This is where the Wi-Fi card is located. Once you get so far, replace it with the new one, retrace back your steps, carefully placing every component where it was and reconnecting each part as it was. Never hesitate to check twice. Once you think you're done, do not proceed to close the computer completely until you can see everything turns back on as it should, so leave the final screws for the end. In this case, once we turned it back on, the BIOS showed us a checksum error that you just need to confirm so the computer boots up again. Once Windows boots, and this is an experience that may be helpful for some of you, I had to connect to the internet through cable. If this is not an option for you, you can also use a very cheap USB Wi-Fi dongle, this due to the fact that Windows needs to download the new adapter's drivers. It immediately started installing the Bluetooth driver and after that, it surprisingly stopped and did not install the network adapter driver as I expected. It may have been due to the fact that there were Windows updates being installed. So I let them finish and restarted the computer. Still nothing, which was different to the very quick and self-installed drivers of the PCIe mini card we tested in the older laptop. Also from Recon. I decided to go for the Windows optional update, check them all, restart it again, and then the adapter finally self-installed. Then automatically connected to my Wi-Fi, so I actually started testing its performance. Bluetooth connections are excellent. Fast discovery, pairing, and speakers, as well as headsets, experience a very good range and quality. Of course, something to expect from Bluetooth 5.1. Performance is great even in AC networks or Wi-Fi 5. I'm showing you right here the performance that you get by installing this card 
without any tweaking of the adapter or the access point. Is the performance out of the box for this card downloading big files from a server over Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11ac network, which uh, has very nice speeds. And what I like so far is that it does not overload the processor as we've seen USB dongles do when working at high speeds. So right here, an answer to those possible questions. Is it better an internal Wi-Fi card than just a USB Wi-Fi adapter? The answer is yes. Not only because they are normally faster, but also do not overload the processor. This also translates into a battery saving advantage. Some of this load you're seeing right here in each example here is due to the screen recorder software that I use. Browsing files is also a task that was greatly improved from using this Wi-Fi 6 adapter. As I noticed, it is done very fast and very snappy. I then proceeded to connect to a Wi-Fi 6 network based on this Omata EAP610 from TP-Link, fantastic AP by the way. Performance of course improved even further. As you can see right here, there is a considerable difference with the previous performance of this computer before the update. And what's interesting is that we are connecting to an AP that even though it's Wi-Fi 6, yet it does not support what is known as ultra high frequency of the extended version of the Wi-Fi 6 at the 6 GHz spectrum. Let's remember that the 6 GHz band is even less congested than the 5 GHz band. Not to get more technical in this video, which is not the point, we'll try and make a video with an AP supporting this technology in the near future. Still, this technology is not widely available in access points of the biggest brands oriented for big deployments, or if they are, they may be very well overpriced. Let me show you something we experienced in one of these computers after the update. Connected to Wi-Fi 6 and we got a very decent link speed. However, real-life transfers were very slow, almost at a wireless end standard. Try it again and again, getting closer to the AP and still very low transfer speeds. I laid a temporary cable from my PoE switch directly to the AP, which is about a 20 meter run, and then finally got the speeds I was expecting. Turns out the cable was the problem and it's not something that we are used to when dealing with Wi-Fi problems. Something interesting is that it was reporting a 1 gigabit per second link. I know that this may help some of you out there trying to figure out one of the many reasons why your wireless network may not go up to its limits. As a conclusion, I am very happy with this adapter and may be a very good option for a lot of people who are looking forward to step up to Wi-Fi 6 without having to renew your computer. Or even if you have a new one, give a new air to your older laptops either with NGFF cards or PCIe mini options. Thanks for watching this video, please support us by hitting the like button of this video and if you like our contents, subscribe to our channel as we have tons of cool things to come. This was Alan from Technology Moments and see you next time.